guys, I have a really cool guest for you today, the always wonderful Mary Kubica, who has a book coming out in just a few days, The Other Misses. She is one of my favorite authors, so it was super cool to get to chat with her, and I hope you guys learn a lot from her experience and her, you know, different journey to being published, and now she's got her sixth book coming out, so she's definitely somebody that has some great information to share. So Mary, can you tell us about your upcoming novel, The Other Misses? Sure. The Other Misses, um, it's about a family of four, a mother, father, and their two sons, and they inherit a home. They're from Chicago originally, but they inherit a home on a remote islands off the coast of Maine when um, the father, Will, his, his sister dies. And so they relocate. It's kind of a good time for them to leave Chicago behind and have a fresh start in Maine. Um, but shortly after their arrival, um, a neighbor right across the street from them winds up murdered. And so all eyes kind of look suspiciously to the new family in town. And um, Sadie, the mother, she comes to realize that the only way to kind of protect her family and the reputation is to find out who killed this woman herself. <laughs> It's so good. I, it was my, um, I think a couple episodes ago, it was my favorite book. I do like a favorite book of the week, and I loved it. It was so good. Uh, thank you for saying that. Yes. So you have quite a few books under your belt. So what I would love to know and just kind of maybe a you know overview of your journey to, to getting published and then getting to the point where you are now. Sure. Um so I was just one of those kids who loved to write. Um, you know, I did it as a hobby since I was probably middle school aged. I was always very shy about my writing. I didn't like to share it with many people. So um, when I was younger, you know, I never actually thought that I would want to be an author when I grew up. The idea of putting my work out there for other people to read it sort of terrified me. Um, so it was something that I just kept very much to myself. Um, and I, I, I knew I always wanted to be a teacher. So professionally, I went that route. Uh, after college, I became a high school history teacher. Um, but all the while, you know, when I was growing up, when I was in school myself, when I was teaching, I continued to write just at every opportunity that I had. Um, and then back in 2005, my daughter was born, and I, I left my teaching career to stay home and care for her. And it was then that I started working on The Good Girl. And, you know, when I began it, it was like any of the other Um, unfinished manuscripts that I had begun like the 20 or 15 years prior to that. Um, But I I quickly fell in love with the book and the characters in a way that I had just never felt before. You know, I connected with this story unlike anything that I had ever written before. And at some point in the process, you know, it it was the first time that I, I kind of felt it in my gut that I had to finish this and I had to see if I could do something with it. You know, I, 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 I just felt that. Um, so it took me five years to write The Good Girl. Um, I, I had my daughter, and then shortly after, I had a son. So there were two little ones in the house with me. And so trying to find the time to write was not <laughs> easy. Yes. Um, so it took five years. And then when I was done, you know, I kind of thought, what now? I, I didn't know anybody in that publishing world. I didn't, I didn't know any authors. I didn't have any author friends. I hadn't studied creative writing in school. Um, I didn't belong to a writer's group because I had been so sort of withdrawn about my writing that I, I wasn't ever comfortable going to a writer's group and sharing my work with other people. Yeah. So I just had no connections. Um, but I you know, got on the internet, as we do these days, and <laughs> started researching and you know, looking up, what do I do? What are, what are the next steps as to, to try and get this book published? Um, so I came across the... Um, uh, the writer's market book that lists literary agents, which of course was the first step is to find a literary agent. Yep. And um, so I, I wrote up a query letter and started sending it out to just pretty much anybody in that book, you know, any agent that I represented the type of work that I had written. And I, I didn't keep track of how many agents that I was sending it to, but there were, there were a lot, you know, if I had to guess it would be upwards of like 75 or a hundred agents that I sent that book to, or, you know, sent the query letter. Some maybe asked for a couple pages or chapters. Um, a few of the agents did ask to read the entire book, but over the course of the next, you know, many months, every single agent that I sent the good girl to turned it down. And so I thought, you know, of course this book was never going to be published. Right. Um, <laughs> and I, I was heartbroken, but I don't know that I was totally surprised because I knew that 
I knew that trying to get a book published wasn't going to be an easy task. So yeah. I think the part of me had expected that. Um, but I, I love to write still. So I moved on. I started writing something else. I don't even know what it is or where it is anymore because it was just <laughs> nothing that looked me like the good girl had. Um, so two years after all those rejections came came in, one of the agents who had previously turned me down reached back out to me wow. to see if I had ever sold my book or if I was being represented by anybody. And it just so happens that um, when she first read The Good Girl, she was brand new at the agency, kind of right out of college, and she had gone through the slush pile and came across it and fell in love with it. But she just couldn't get the rest of her team on board. It wasn't the right time for it. Yeah. Uh, she didn't have the authority to take it on herself. Well, within those two years, she was promoted from an assistant agent to a literary agent. And so she was able to take on her own clients. And she reached back out to me. Um, to see if, you know, it was available. And so it, it was really a dream come true, you know, and in retrospect, it was just the best way that, that it happened because I knew she was as passionate about that book as I was. Um, so we kind of worked together, cleaned it up a little bit. And then later that year, it was like 2012 by this point, um, she was sending it out to publishers and I was able, I got, I got um, two offers for The Good Girl and I was able to speak to each of the editors at the publishing houses and I, I just fell in love with my editor, that first conversation that we had. Um, and, you know, all these books later, she's still my editor, which I think is a rarity these days um, in the industry. But um, I've published almost, with the exception of 2019, I've published almost um, one book a year since then. So this will be number six. That's awesome. And I love, you know, I, I love asking this question because I love just to hear all the different journeys because it happens so differently for you know, each author, everybody has their own unique story to, to getting books published and getting where they want to be. But I, I especially love that you worked on the good girl for five years. Like you wrote it for that period of like period of time, because I feel like I see, and you know, some people are faster drafters and revisers and things like that. But some people I, you know, connect with have written like three books in a year. And I, that like blows my mind. I'm like, I spend like at least two to three years on a book. <laughs> it, it blows my mind too, because I know that there, are, I mean, one a year is at, you know, it's the very most I could ever do. So authors that are doing any more than that, and even one a year, you know, that's difficult. And it's the reason that I didn't have one come out last year. You know, I just couldn't keep up with that pace and yeah. feel like I was giving the book my everything. Yes. <laughs> Well, um, I, I love too just your story about, um, you know, your agent who eventually came back and, you know, still had that passion and that excitement for the story. And that, that is definitely what, you know, an author should look for in, in their agent is somebody who's really like really committed and as, as excited about the story as they are. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, um, I mean, she's my champion, you know, she's, she's always got my back and I think that, um, that agent author relationship is just so important. And and when I speak to other authors who, you know, have trouble getting their agents on the phone or, you know, they just um, don't think the same or see things eye to eye, you know, I think that that would be really difficult. So I'm very grateful to have um, such a wonderful agent that I connect so well with. Super difficult, but yeah, I am glad for you that you have that. Um, So what would your, you know, now that you've, you know, been in the, the industry for quite some time and also looking back on your time as you queried, what would you, what would you say like your top tips for writers who are in the querying process right now? What would those tips be? Yeah, it's, it's a hard process and, you know, I feel for anybody that is going through it. I think that there, there's a lot of rejection in the industry. And, you know, as I said before, I got a lot of rejection before I got this one offer for an agent. So, um, I mean, one thing to realize is that the rejection always comes first, um, before, um, you know, before an offer gets made for like every author that I've met, there are so very few of them that queried their novel and got, you know, found an agent or um, a publisher right away. You know, it seems like so many authors have months, if not years of rejection stories to share. So just, just know that, that it happens to many authors. And it's one of those things that you just kind of have to stick with and, um, you know, keep going until you can hopefully find that person that is as excited about your work as you are. I think another thing though, is just to be open to revising. It always surprises me a little bit. Um, when authors who are querying maybe get feedback from an agent and they're reluctant to 
try to revise the manuscript yeah. um, just because I think, you know, it's something that well-established authors, we're still revising. We're still getting advice from, you know, agents and editors, and that's just part of the process. Um, so I think that always be open to revising. And, you know, if there's something that you feel you just would absolutely not feel right changing, then by all means don't change. But I think be willing to um, to make some changes uh, just it's, it's how, you know, they're in the industry, they know what sells, they know what readers like, or what puts a reader off, and so I think that that's really helpful to take their, their words to heart. I think that's super helpful, and I think it's a, 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 like, a transition in your mind as an author that you have to make once you start that querying process, right? Like, writing the book is very solitary, very much just you, but as you open it up to, to that creative partnership with an agent, you definitely have to kind of shift your mindset and be like, okay, I'm going to have to make changes. Not everything is going to stay the same. (laughs) Right. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I always say it, you know, by the time my agent and my editor have gotten their hands on my manuscripts, they're just, they're just so much better. They're so much more polished Yeah. by the time it's gone through that process, you know, Rough drafts are exactly that. They're rough. Yeah. Um, when it takes time to just make it what it is before, you know, it's out there on the bookstore shelf and, and people are reading it. Definitely. Very good advice. Uh, my next question for you is a two-parter. <clears throat> so I'd love to know what the hardest part of writing is for you and then the hardest part of being an author. Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think the hardest part of writing is sort of that middle of the manuscript. Um, I I get excited about a new idea and, you know, just a totally blank slate and I can do what I want with the story and just sort of creating it. And whatever that initial idea was that kind of lured me to the story. Um, so the beginning is always fun. Um, the ending is super fun, too, because it's where those pieces hopefully come together, you know, in some really dynamic way. Or there's a big twist or, you know, whatever is happening. It's where, you know, all these 350 pages that I've been building up to finally come together. But the middle can be hard because, you know, it needs to be page turning still. You don't want a, a reader to lose interest. And yeah have to build up to that conclusion but it's a lot of pages there in the middle (laughs) where you kind of have to keep thinking of different twists or different um different exciting things to happen to just keep the the readers turning the pages um so that can be difficult and I'm not I'm not an author who outlines so I don't I don't really think a lot of that through in advance you know I just take it one scene at a time and so some days I'll get to the point of like hmm like what now or you know I'm not really sure where I'm going so that that can be hard um I would say the hardest part just about being an author in general um it, it's probably turning blind eye to the reviews that are out there. Um, and I think as authors, you know, that's the first thing that they tell you, don't read your own reviews. Right. Um, and <laughs> I do sometimes, I don't always, but sometimes I do, especially if I have a new book and I just want to, I want to know what the general consensus is of it. Um, but it, it's hard, you know, cause it's something that you've spent a year or a year and a half of your life on. And, um, you know, you're, I think as an author, we're so totally connected to these characters yeah. in a way that a reader may not be just because I think of the, the time that we spend with them. You know, we're thinking about them all the time, even when we're not reading them. So it's hard to get those those negative reviews. And of course, every reader is subject to their own opinion. I, I've read plenty of books that I, I didn't love, um, but it's hard as an author to, to see those. Definitely. I can imagine, you know, that would be hard. And, and it's hard even as you go through... It, it can be like the the critique process with like a beta reader or a critique partner just to hear them give you feedback you know about something you know they they didn't like that like you absolutely love I've had that happen um so I can yeah. imagine on a, on a much larger scale well there's tons more people reading your book who you have zero <laughs> control over that could be a right. little hard <laughs> Absolutely. And even when I go through the the editing process with my editor, um, you know, she'll send me an editorial letter or we'll have a phone conversation about, you know, what's working, what's not working. And my husband always teases me that I need like a 24 hour digestion period Uh because my first response is, oh, no, she's wrong. You know, I'm I'm defensive. And then usually once it's had a chance to settle and I've thought it through, I realize, no, you know, she's right on all or almost all of the points that she's made, you know, but it just takes, it takes time to sort of adjust to that. It does. You definitely need to digest all the 
the feedback first before responding to it. At least I do. That's how I work. (laughs) Absolutely. So I want to flip that question and talk about the positives. So what would be, in your opinion, the best part of being a writer for you and then the best part of being an author? Oh, I, I mean, there, I just, I love to write, you know, like it's, it's crazy to me that I get to make a living doing this thing that I have loved to do since I was like 12 years old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am, I'm an early riser. So like my favorite thing in the world is to get up at 5 a.m., make some coffee and get on the computer. Um, everybody else in the house is still asleep. The ideas are fresh. And so it's just, I, I look forward to it. I mean, there are days, it sounds crazy, but when I go to sleep at night, you know, I'm excited that in however many hours I get to wake up and write. Um, so I think that's my, my favorite part. It's just like how passionate I am about writing. There are times certainly, you know, I'm under deadline or things aren't working right. And then it feels more like a job. Yeah. <laughs> most of the time it just feels like this, this, wonderful hobby of mine that I actually get to make a living doing um and then I think as for the the best part about being an author is getting to hear you know that a reader has really you know connected with one of the characters or that they cried at the end of a book mm-hmm. or you know they were really surprised by a twist you know just to get that validation that what I'm trying to do on the page is having the effects that I hope it's having on the reader um I love going to book clubs and actually like discussing the the contents of the book with readers I don't get to necessarily do that at like bookstore and library events because not everybody has read it but I do get to uh, either visit book clubs in person or Skype with book clubs and so that's that's really cool to, you know, just hear directly from the readers um, or even just connecting with readers on social media. I get a lot of emails from readers, things like that, um, that just will say, you know, every now and then I'll get one from a reader that will say that they've, they were having a really hard time in their life and reading, you know, one of my books was the only thing that kind of got them through it. And that just means the world to me. Yeah, that would be the best. It's like the flip side of the bad reviews. You get all the good ones who <laughs> are, who Absolutely. make it all better. <laughs> <laughs> So my next question, you kind of answered a little bit for me, but I, I, I want to ask about your, your writing style. If you're more of, you know, a planner or somebody who just, you know, is a pantser who just writes and you said that you don't outline. So I'd love to know just how that, you know, process works for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely a pantser. Um, <laughs> and I've been the same with all of my books. Every now and then I think maybe I should try outlining, but but I, I'm kind of not interested. You know, I just love that organic, spontaneous feel of, um, you know, a character says something and all of a sudden it shifts my perspective of them. And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe this character isn't who I thought they were. And the, the story just goes in a different direction. And there's something very exhilarating about that. So for me as, as a writer, um, the last couple of books, I did have the ending in mind, but usually I just have my starting points. You know, some mystery has developed somebody yeah. has um you know someone's vanished or something like that and that's kind of all I all I know at the beginning of the story and so I usually lead in with that and start to create my characters and once I get a better sense of who they are and you know what this mystery is that's unfolding here then I can kind of start to the wheels are turning and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how the story is going to end and the pieces are going to come together so I, I usually just focus on any given day on like whatever scene I'm writing or chapter I'm writing um, and then I might be thinking just like a chapter or two ahead, but it isn't until usually I'm like halfway through a book that I, I start to really figure out how it's all going to come together. I like that. I, I, I definitely t- tend to lean more towards the pantser side just because it's, it's more fun that way for me. And I feel like you get to know your characters in a different way than if you outline. Sometimes outlining for me just feels very like suffocating like I feel like I have to follow it if I've thought of it that way you know like I'm like I I can't break it (laughs) I I completely agree it feels very like dry and stifling and you know you don't have I mean I think that authors who outline might disagree but I feel like you don't have that same just um like creative energy going necessarily or um no no you know and I I think that I probably get myself trapped in corners sometimes because, you know, I've written myself into a corner and, you know, the only way to get out of it is delete, delete, delete. Um, And I think that authors that outline maybe don't, that doesn't happen as much because they know where the story's going and so they're prepared for that. But there's just still something I I can't bring myself to do it. (laughs) I can't, yeah. And I, I love that 
that is how you do it because I, the books of yours that I've read, I feel like the twists and like the big reveals that happen are always so perfectly timed. And like you would think as a, you know, a, a writer reading someone else's book, in my mind, I'm like, she's got to like plan these out like way ahead of time. So like she knows what's going on. But yeah, I mean, you do a good job Thank even you. if you get yourself stuck into a corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that I do when I'm writing, all of my books have, um, a, a, they're all first person, almost all first person narr- narrators, and they all have a couple of narrators, but I usually just do one at a time. So oh. with the other misses, we hear from Sadie Camille and then a character named Mouse. And so I wrote those all separate. So, you know, I start, started the book and I wrote Sadie in her entirety, and then I went back and I wrote Camille and then Mouse. And so in that way, I can um, really just like hone in on that one character at a time, you know, um, like her or his or her plot and their voice. That way I can hopefully try and keep their voices a little bit more distinct. I, I love that. I, I think that, um, that is a really good way to keep their, their voices and probably their story a little bit straighter too for you. Right, absolutely, especially because sometimes there's um, differences in time, and, you know, something is happening in one's life, and it's not necessarily overlapping with another, so that definitely helps me to keep their stories separate, but then it's really fun at the end when I have, you know, three or four, basically, you know, like, little separate stories, now yeah. once, and I get to sort of shuffle them back together and see how it all unfolds as one novel. Yeah, that's definitely cool. I love it. Um so you sort of mentioned the answer to this one already too, which I love. Um, my question is, when did your love of writing start? And you know, I know you said that this has been like your dream since you were like twelve years old. <laughs> yeah, I I was I was always a big reader. You know, I just would go to the bookstore, or the library, um, and just get as many books as I could possibly bring home. I never really thought a whole lot about writing though until I was, like I said, about twelve. And I was actually at a sleepover with a cousin of mine, and she at the time wanted to be a writer. And she had written this story. She's just a year older than I am. And she wrote a story, and and she shared it with me. And I was just, I mean, her story was so good. And I I think it was the first time that I was really intrigued by the idea of writing my own stories and creating my own characters. And and so I started with that. and, And I would say, you know, early on, it was, it was really more a journal of sorts, you know, like a quote unquote fictional character who was a lot like me, but more outgoing, more adventurous would kind of come to life, um, through the pages of whatever I was writing. And I was sort of living vicariously through these characters. Um, so that was kind of how it began, you know, and I, it was kind of a way for me to explore, I think, whatever was going on in my own life on the page, sort of, um, through fictional eyes. So that was where it began and then just kind of morphed, you know, as, as I got older and had more experiences. I love it. I, I think, um, writing, especially at a younger age, is such a great outlet for all the crazy things we have going on inside our heads. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> yes. Um, so my next question for you is about your revision process. I'd love to know what that looks like for you. And, and you know, we as somebody who has an agent and editor, like, of course, you know, once you get to that point, they help you along. But what are your things that you do before, before you hand it off to your agent? Yeah. So I, um, I tend to revise as I go. So when I finish a chapter, I usually go back through it a couple of times just to make sure it's, it's, you know, like 90% good. Um, uh, maybe not a hundred percent. Cause I know that <laughs> I jump, I end up jumping back and forth in the text. Sometimes, you know, I'll think of something on page 150 that affects something I wrote previously so I'll go back and forth but I do like to revise kind of as I go so that by the time I reach the end I have a pretty clean draft um and then you know I'll I'll read through it a couple times uh make some revisions and then I always print out a copy Hmm. and go through it on on a hard copy because it just for some reason it always feels like it reads a little bit differently to me when I have that hard copy yeah so that's kind of my process and then I um will send it off to my agent and my editor at that point I definitely love to hold it in my hands like it, it definitely reads different and I feel like it you catch different things when it's on paper as opposed to scrolling through you know whatever yeah. word word you know processor you use yeah, completely. And I think that sometimes, you know, when you're just staring it on the screen, you start to, you just get so used to it. You probably memorize chunks and I think yeah. you're, you're not going through it as, um, 
as deeply as you think you might be. But for some reason, like you know, you said on the page, on the page, it, it looks different. Definitely. Um, so, Mary, I just have one last question for you, and I would love to know what your favorite book is right now. And you know, again, this isn't your favorite book of all time; just a book you've read recently that you really enjoyed. Yeah, I. I have read, um, I've read a lot of good books lately, I have to say, but there was one that just absolutely blew my mind, and I think, I want to say that it's out in April, so you have to wait just a little bit for it, but, um, uh, Jennifer Hillier's Little Secrets, it's absolutely phenomenal, and it's great, it's getting wonderful, wonderful buzz already, um, and it's about the disappearance of a little boy, I want to say he's five or six years old, um, but the story just goes off in this totally different direction that I didn't anticipate when I started reading, and it just com- completely blew my mind. It has like wonderful twists and turns and this perfectly satisfying ending, so definitely look for that one. Mm, that sounds awesome. We'll put it on our list. Mary, thank you so much for chatting with me today and letting you know me and my listeners get to know you and telling us about your upcoming book, The Other Misses, which everybody should go pre-order now. Thank you for having me. I love chatting with you. Thank you so much for listening. As always, please rate and review this podcast wherever you might be listening or share it with your friends and go give Mary some love and make sure to pre-order and buy The Other Misses that comes out in just a handful of days. That is a book that you guys are going to want to read. Thanks so much.